Hey, what's up everybody? Glad to see you here. Actually, I can't see you here, but I'm glad to see you watching my videos and commenting and stuff like that. So, totally awesome. You guys are killer for watching this, and hopefully you guys learn a quite a bit through here. I'm going to teach as much as I can. Right now, I am unrolling the transfer paper. It's white. I got it face down, and then I'm just going to go ahead and tape it down. Make sure you get all the corners and get it as flat as you can. I'm unrolling the second sheet, just kind of overlapping it with the other one. Like I said, I'm just taping it down just so it doesn't move on me. Don't have to be perfect, but if you can get it as flat as you can. Just trimming down the rest of it with my scissors. I am putting my design that I drew up previous um, right over top of all that. And I'm just pulling off all the tape that I'm going to be using because I like reusing a lot of my stuff um, instead of throwing it away. Uh, just kind of, you know, saves money and you know, that goes a long way. So right now I'm just taping up the edges, making sure it's all nice and flat. So I won't have no problems. Tracing time. Um, after when you get your image drawn up, however you want it, you just draw uh, all your little lines that you want to show up underneath and get transferred onto your canvas. I use a pen instead of a pencil because I did use a pencil before so I, and now that I'm using a pen now it shows up a lot better just in case if I miss anything in between um, just to make sure that I got it all. I am pressing down pretty hard on here. Um, I'm just wanting to make sure I'm getting my image transferred uh, really really good um, onto my canvas. Usually I wouldn't press as hard, but since I'm doing a walkthrough, I wanted it to show up really, really good. So I didn't want to have no faint lines or anything like that. So I wanted to make sure everything was really, really clear and eligible to see. Now, if you do make a mistake and you accidentally put a line where you don't want to, it's totally cool. Just keep going. And then after when you tear off all the paper, you can just go ahead and you just wipe it away. It comes off fairly easy. We're going to paint over this whole entire thing. So even if it's black underneath, we're going to be putting in our own black. Um, side note, there are all kinds of ways to get your, uh, your picture transferred onto your canvas. This is just one of them that I just wanted to show you. Okay, we're almost done tracing, which that is good news because I'm sure it's probably Super boring watching me trace this thing um, for that long. So here we go. We are peeling off the first paper, which has got my picture on it. Um, and then now I will just take off the, uh, the graphite paper and then our image will be underneath. And uh, I like to uh, take it off really, really easy just so I can reuse all of this again and again. Um, and I'm trying not to rip it. So pretty much, voila, we have a success. It is an alien.
So this is what I'm going to use to cover uh, some big areas really, really fast. And uh, yeah, let's keep going. Alrighty, let's begin. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm just fogging over the whole picture um, with the white. Uh, I got a fairly a good amount of distance between uh, my airbrush and the canvas. Just painting over uh, just to kind of give a little bit of a top coat. You don't want to go too heavy and you don't want to go too light. You just want just enough. Um, this is going to be able to set your blacks so when you go in with your black, you'll be able to see it and it will show up on your black background. So by doing this and painting it white, you will be able to add your black in here later. Um, it just makes it a lot easier and a lot faster to go about doing this. So this is kind of what I do. Okay, I just printed out uh, the pictures that I'm going to be doing and I'm going to be looking at. I don't really look at this picture. I'm going to be looking at the one off of my TV screen because I got my computer hooked up to it and I can zoom in on the picture and just look at a lot more detail than my picture can actually print out. So right now I'm just using a little bit of a stencil that I cut uh, out with a piece of paper and some scissors. Yeah, so look around your house. There will be stencils all over the place that you can make and use, and it doesn't cost you anything. What I do is I chop up a lot of uh, magazines. I use the front cover, and that makes a really good stencil, and you just cut it out to the shape that you want. So keep that in mind. So basically, I'm just kind of uh, running this little stencil around, kind of getting some of my uh, hard edges that I'm wanting to do. Don't have to be perfect because I'm going to come back in with black and I'm going to go back into the background and kind of uh, clean it all up. I'm just kind of wanting to get some of my highlights out just so they're nice and bright. But I don't want to lay too much paint down, so it's best to... Um, lay down just enough because you can always add more it's just super hard to take away so just kind of remember that say less is more um, that's kind of what I live by uh, I can always go darker actually this in this case I can always go brighter with my white but I like to like I said I like to reduce it down so much that I can keep spraying and spraying and I can see my picture taking shape and I still have a lot of transparency in that white. So it is pretty forgiving paint if you reduce it down a lot, meaning you can get like a thousand different whites just by just the one white. You can just build really slow and get a smooth transition from a light white to a medium white to a heavy white. I want to talk about distance real quick. You'll see me painting way back here. That's when I'm trying to cover in um, some areas really, really lightly. But then if I'm getting really, really close, then that means I'm, I'm wanting to focus on uh, some of the areas that I want um, more precise. When I go closer in to my picture that I'm painting on, my air, I got uh, a Mac valve down here. Um, I'm going to decrease that so I don't have a whole lot of air coming out. But then the farther I come back is going to be the more air I'm going to pump up just so I can cover it a lot faster and a lot nicer. So getting those really detailed thin lines you're wanting, try uh, taking your air down to 5 PSI and then just gradually bump up and make sure your paint is really reduced down and you have a really good surface uh, for your paint to stick on. I want to give an example. If your air compressor says 10 PSI, when you go and you push down on the airbrush and you release your air, it is actually going to drop. So you got to kind of compensate for that. And a good surface to paint on is a poster board that you can buy like at Walmart for like 99 cents. 
you just paint on not the smooth side but the kind of the rougher side and I've done that for many many years and that works really really good okay makes sense another thing I'd like to show you is I usually always have my hand on the canvas close in and I'm doing a lot of detail work um, I usually always have my pinky as a reference point kind of like a pivot point um, you'll see it either be out here or sometimes when I'm kind of uh, more in I'll kind of close it in or sometimes I'll have the whole thing and I'll and I'll still have my pinky tucked under and then that allows me to get some uh, really nice fine lines you just get a lot more precision if you have kind of like a like a pivot point that you can kind of use so usually when I'm always really really close I always got a finger um, on my canvas here okay a couple tricks that help me is I take the needle cap off the very very front that allows me to get to the needle and I can pick off the paint really quick um, that's just the the fun things of working with water-based paint um, and leaving the air on even if you're not painting it's kind of awkward to do at first but once you get it down it actually is really really smooth so keep that in mind uh, when you're painting leaving that air down and kind of uh, you know sweeping across your artwork makes it a lot better than letting off of the air every time and then pushing it back down so it just makes it a lot faster and a lot consistent oh yeah mr aliens coming along uh we will be back for a lot more um just looking at him he has a lot of work to do basically doing a recap all we did is we just transferred the image with this transfer paper here um then we just went in and just kind of uh misted the whole picture with some white paint going back and just kind of bringing out some of the highlights here and eventually the more we go we will be adding black in um, just to give it some depth give it a three-dimensional look kind of push back a lot of this overspray we'll be using the gel pens down here on some of these really really bright areas that we need to really make it highlight and stand out hopefully you guys are having a lot of fun I know I am so we are definitely gonna make this alien rock like a boss He's going to look like he's coming out of the picture and, and eating little children. Yeah, so I'm glad to have you. I'm glad to see you guys in my videos. Leave a comment, and I will see you guys in the next video.